just turned six o'clock. Right. <laughs> so I'll call the meeting to order. Recording in progress. So, um, first up would be uh, public comment. Anybody out there for public comment? I believe we have. Oh, yeah, we have. Go ahead, come on, step right up or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 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 we're ready. Yeah, go ahead. Are you yeah, John's no, on the yes, yes. You know, you're on the agenda. That you're next. We're just oh, doing oh. public comment. First. Oh, okay, sorry. So it doesn't look like there's anybody here for public comment, John. Okay. Anybody? Uh, on Zoom for public comment? Uh, I'm not seeing any. I don't see any other Zooms but you. Okay. Right here. All right, so. Um, I did not, I didn't realize I printing the meeting, so I didn't print out an agenda. Oh, okay. Well, next on the agenda, uh, John, is uh, MRVAS with Mark Giametti. And they're here, John. And he is here. Now, along with Johnny so, Summers. Yeah? I'm sorry, who, who? So we have Manor of Valley Ambulances on the agenda. Ah, uh, yes. And they're, okay. so they're next, and we have uh, Johnny and Mark here to talk, talk to us about the ambulance service. Okay. Why don't you guys come on up? Now so you are. Mark is on our board. He's yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we haven't we got an email from him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Johnny, did you see him? Happy to see you, buddy. Robin Kim, Robin, yes. nice to meet you. Sasha. Sasha. Nice to meet you, Sasha. Yes. Glad to meet you. Glad to meet you. So I sent along a, a presentation earlier. Yeah, I figured you could be a copy. Yeah, yeah. I bet you're going to copy that. Yeah. Absolutely. I did look at the batteries and stuff. So I have two of them. Sure. Okay. 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 You don't want to come up, Johnny? Or? Sure. So I've been with Mervis oh, for, uh, for 10 years as an EMT and been on the board for eight of the last 10 years as the treasurer. And this, uh, the reason I'm, I wanted to get together with the select board is I participated in a uh, rural EMS study last fall. Uh, there are a lot of challenges coming down the pipe for EMS. And the number one takeaway from that, uh, from that uh, uh, study was the need to engage with select boards because a lot of the select boards didn't really appreciate what's going on in the uh, EMS world. And the last thing the select boards told us they want to hear is surprises. They don't want us to, or any agency to come up 10 years from now and say, oh, guess what, we need a million dollars uh, this year. Yeah. Can you make that on your budget? So I'm trying to get ahead of that by meeting with uh, all the Valley uh, boards. So I met with Facebook last week. You guys tonight, the wait still in the morning uh, next week. So uh, there's a lot in this thing, and we have a short time, but I'm happy uh, to be at your disposal anytime after the meeting via email or text or phone to answer any questions you might have about, uh, about what's going on. Um, Just letting you talk sure. it. John, can you uh, hear Mark all right and everything? I'm sorry. Can you hear Mark okay? Uh, not really, no. Okay. Where is, uh, is this your meeting, Al, here? Can yeah. I speak? into the meeting owl a little bit better. John, is that is that better now? Yes. Okay, great. I will I will talk to the owl. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, Even a little closer. Yeah. You can't look at the screen. You have to talk to the I got I'm hi Al, how are you doing there? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I'm the, the first few pages of, of the of this presentation are really just some background material on on Mervis, uh, you know, our coverage area where we operate, the services we provide, uh, you know, in addition to EMS response were uh, available for uh, rescue, for uh, vehicle ext extrication, for backcountry rescue. We also do things like firefighter support in the event uh, firefighters need our assistance to monitor their health. Event coverage, so things like uh, the MAD Marathon, the stage races, as well as non-emergency transports. So if there are subscribers who need to get to the doctor, 
Mervis is there to, uh, to help them along with that. Uh, page four just gives you an overview of our, I'm not going to get into detail here, of, our, of our, what we do, our, our disciplines, how we're organized. We're, of course, a not-profit, not-for-profit organization. We operate under the medical direction of uh, CDMC up in uh, Berlin. Uh, our principal assets, of course, we have our station down in, in Waitsfield. We have three fully equipped ambulances. We have a rescue rig, uh, a backcountry mule, which is basically an ATV, and 14 AEDs that uh, we distribute amongst our members so that they're close to, close to our patients around the valley. Um, on page, page five, we kind of get into the, the, the nuts and bolts here. So uh, Mervis has been able, for the last, really it's the last 52 years, has been able to uh, cover its operating expenses. So this chart is showing you from 2014 to 2023 our operations. So what we generate in terms of operating a revenue, which really comes from, from uh, two major sources, insurance billing of billings to uh, private insurers, to Medicaid and Medicare, uh, and then subscriptions, which is a smaller percentage, but still important. Those are the blue, blue bars on that chart. The orange bars are our operating expenses. And uh, you can see that basically we've been able to cover our, our operating expenses over the last 10 years without relying on uh, any uh, ongoing support from any government agencies. On the next page is uh, what we, we look at our capital expenditures. And on the, the orange and blue bar shows the funding for the last 10 years. We basically have raised about a million and a half dollars uh, the orange bar is from donations. So uh, donations, Moortown, for example, has been very generous. They gave us $30,000. Uh, Valley businesses, Valley residents, visitors have uh, been, gener uh, been uh, generous. So roughly 60% of the cash that, that Mervis generates comes from donations. The remaining 40% uh, uh, comes from our net operating revenue, which uh, net operating income, which from the prior page. Mm -hmm. So donations are a critical component of what we, what we need to fund our CapEx. The bar on the right, the yellow and uh, green bar and gray bar, show what we've had to spend in the last uh, 10 years to keep up with CapEx replacement. And you can see the major items are really our ambulances. Those are the big ticket items. You know, they, they were around uh, 220, 230,000. They're now uh, over 300,000. And our next quote, which you'll see in a couple of pages, is you know, over 370,000. So they're, that's what's really been stinging us for, the, for the, uh, our main challenge. Yeah, we see that. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I, Faceton was mentioning, you know, they've had to replace some road crew, road equipment. It's yeah, like just going road, through the roof. Through it's the just roof. Out, it's yeah. outrageous. This next page is a, a, a little uh, basic, but I, I just wanted to sh share with the select boards how Mervis has approached its capital planning for the last 52 years. If we have to buy an ambulance in 10 years, we will look at the cost of that, anticipate the cost of that. So in this example, in the top set of rows, it's $400,000. What we will try to do is, on our balance sheet, we will allocate $40,000 a year each year, representing the, uh, the uh, future liability. And what we'll do is then try to set aside investments so that we match that liability so that when the 10th year comes, we're supposed to have 400, we have 400. And we measure ourselves every, actually every month on where we stand in that funding, that funding gap, the reserve versus available funds. The bottom lines, the bottom rows, are the actual uh, numbers from our most recently approved CapEx plan that uh, was approved uh, just uh, this last board meeting. And you can see that, you know, our, and I'll, we'll get into some details to what's behind that, but basically by the end of year 10, we've got a deficit of 430,000, 420,000. That doesn't mean we're out of cash. It means that we are no longer able to keep up with the expected cost of replacing our capital, and, and which is essential to our, our ongoing mission. Uh, on the next page, page eight, this is, this is the, the actual uh, capital expenditure approved budget here. So you can see that the, the boxes in green represent when we've actually, uh, we expect to, to make the purchase. So the first line, for example, our radio replacements. So these are radios that our, our squad carries around. Uh, we expect in 2033 to have to, to shell out $27,000 to replace that. So we're accruing an amount each year to reflect that. But I mentioned on the ambulance, uh, a couple of rows down, you can see the ambulance vehicles. So 2027, we have a $372,000 replacement. 2030, we have a $406,000 replacement. And in 2020, 2034, 
And what we've tried to do is we've actually stretched out the useful life of our ambulances. We're, we're, you'll, you'll see that we're actually doing that. It was about 10 years. We're moving it now to 12 years and trying to stagger them to kind of smooth out the cash flows. But it's still a significant, significant cash outlay for us. And then the rest of the chart shows some of the other equipment, not, not de minimis, but you know, the LP15 is coming up in uh, 2026. We are on the hook for 120,000. These are the machines in the back of the ambulance yeah. that can defibrillate and take vital signs and, and monitor patients on, on our way. So on page nine, it gets to the kind of the, the, the ugly part of the picture. You know, right now, we're, we're effectively fully funded for our expected, as well, for our, our liabilities right now. But as I grow this thing out, I see a gap. And that's the gap that I'm trying to get ahead of with the select boards, to share that with them so that they know what's coming and try to uh, anticipate that by, by requesting some donations to help close that so the number is bite-sized as opposed to monstrous. And that's uh, basically, uh, basically where we stand right now. Now, why, why, are we, why has this happened, right? Well, you know, we've, been, we've been effectively managing our CapEx for the last 50 years. Well, what's happening now? There are a number of factors. One, the cost of CapEx, as you guys know, uh, is, is, is soaring, right? So I looked at the cost of our ambulances, and they're growing at about 5.75% over the last 10 years, which is ahead of, even though inflation's high right now, it's ahead of what the historic inflation rates have been. And our, our revenues and donations grown at about a point and a half. So you can see there's a, that gap is widening, and that's, that's a cause of concern. The other issue is our expenses are growing uh, very, very rapidly in the medical field. Things like paramedic intercepts. We, when we have uh, intercepts from Barrytown, we have a contract with them. If a patient needs care beyond what we can provide, we call them. We're mandated to call them. That cost has gone up from $200 per call, which we can't bill for. To three hundred dollars per call in the last three years, so it's become a burden. We have, you know, we have sixty, seventy of these a year that we have to deal with. Let me down again. I'm sorry. So that's for, for paramedic uh, paramedic intercepts. So if you have oh, a uh, yes, a, a condition, severe pain, for example, they can administer uh, fentanyl or ketamine or something to, uh, right. to as an analgesic for for that trip. Uh, we also protocols. The state. This is good news for all our residents, Valley residents. But the protocols the state is uh, demanding that we meet are costly, and they don't they don't uh, generate additional billing. So, for example, capnography. You know, you ever in the back of the rig and you get a nasal cannula? That used to be the standard, but now we're often using these uh, uh, capnography can cannulas. They're twelve dollars a piece. The old ones were a dollar a piece. There's no change in billing, but the cost on that we use them like candy. So those things uh, go up. Nitrous oxide systems. The state says you need to have you need to have nitrous oxide systems on board for pain management. Well, they're ten thousand dollars. There again, there's no additional funding for that. So, and then the, the final one is no transports. And I think it's, you may have seen a bill that was recently signed by Governor Scott to try to address some of the no transport uh, costs for Medicaid patients. But thirty-two percent of our patients, our, our calls, are no transport. So we'll go out to help a patient. And the patient will not need to be transported to the hospital. We don't want to transport them if they don't need, but they need to be evaluated. There's no revenue associated with that. So Scott, in the bill that the legislature has passed, is going to try to provide some benefit to that. But there are 82 agencies in the state, and uh, there's $150,000 in funding uh, that's budgeted. So uh, I'm not expecting to see much from that. But, but again, no transports are a cost burden. Uh, we also, the, the board should also know that there are Mervis is a unique organization. We're one of only two of the 82 agencies in the state that are remaining all volunteer. And there's an esprit de corps in our squad with people like Johnny uh, who just, they, they show up and they work hard and they love the place. They want to keep it volunteer. And we want to keep it volunteer because going to a hybrid model like Waterbury or going to a professional model, you know, we donated, the members donated 29,000 hours. You quickly do the math, it's about $875,000 in costs that, that the valleys or an agency would have to find funding for if we left that model. But we're, we're growing, we're, we're aging. We have a number of our crew chiefs, no one at this table, is, uh, is getting up there, right? And the, the time commitment 
to get somebody from an EMT to crew chief is huge. And a lot of our young folks just don't have the time to make the commitment to that kind of, uh, to that kind of responsibility. Uh, so we've got that issue with reliance on volunteers. And the, the second big challenge in my view is donor fatigue. And you guys are seeing it, I'm sure, with, with the property tax rebellion. People, you know, they're like, geez, how much more can we give? And you know, we, we received $750,000 in donations in the last 10 years. And we're budgeting 75,000 basically a year we're expecting in that, that red bar chart. I'm counting on that. But, and we're, we're on track this year, but it's not, not necessarily the best way to run a business, expecting people to continue to, to donate. So that, I just want the boards to be aware that there are some fragilities out in our system that, that we, should, uh, we should pay attention to. So what, what we're looking for, uh, this is page 12 now, uh, we're looking for the Valley uh, Boards to, or towns to, to make an annual donation to Mervis, uh, which you'll see on the next page. Uh, and we're, we're apportioning that based upon population. Uh, we're looking for flexibility uh, from the boards. We, we want to we have a dialogue with folks every year and share where we stand. Things could get better. Things could get worse. So these numbers that I'm throwing out right now I, I'm not, I'm not going to say this is the number for the next 10 years. I want to meet with the boards and give them a clear view of what our situation is so, so that they can be engaged. Because there may be trade-offs we have to make as a, as a valley to the level of service we can provide if we can't pay for, pay for the, uh, the upkeep of the squad. And the, the final thing is just the engagement. I would like to stay engaged. And if you folks would let me come, no, that's come that's each year and, uh, and be available. And be available any time during the year if you guys have questions as to what we need. So the last page is what, what I've been, what our first pass at this. So we, went, we met with Faiston uh, last, uh, last uh, Tuesday and shared with them, you know, their population, we're looking at about 9,000. You can see basically just tracks. We're, we had to make an estimate about what Moortown is covered. No one could really give us a precise number of how many households. So we've assumed roughly 50% of your, of your area would be in the, uh, would be in our service area. Uh, and then the rest of Waitsfield more and, and more, and these are based on the 2020 census numbers. And we already, we know, of course, you guys already are paying close to 25,000 a year to uh, Montpelier and to Wasi for uh, coverage in those other areas. So this is basically how the donations would shake out, um, and you know, we just wanted to get ahead. We know the budget season is, is still months, months away, but we thought we'd float these numbers now and let you guys chew on them and think about them and come back to us with questions and and see what uh, what uh, what needs to happen, and that's I'll take any questions and, and that anyone may have. And, and again, thank you guys for your time. I think what it was a year or two ago that we helped fund the, the, uh, the you guys right? thirty thousand dollars. So right. uh, you guys gave thirty. Uh, Warren gave thirty. Facebook yes. gave thirty. Waitsfield is actually embedded now uh, a donation into their uh, annual budget. Uh, Faced is okay. trying to decide whether they want to do a budget line item for a donation or whether they want to make it part of their uh, town meeting vote or would be part one an article mm -hmm. or would be voted on. So they're kind of okay. trying to figure that out. But no, you guys did uh, you guys did help us out with that last capex. But we're we're realizing now this is going to be more of a more of a permanent need as a yeah, no, to each town needs yeah. to yeah. put up some money to keep yeah. the thing going. Yeah, absolutely. Or a donation, however yeah. you want yeah. to call it. Yeah. You know, which the townspeople, it's a service yeah. for everybody in town. Yeah. You know, this, I was reading the local, you know, the, the zone that we, that you guys cover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, no, I mean, oh, I was all right. thorough, so. I, yes, I again, if really something comes to mind, you want to see our financials, we're happy to share that. Or, uh, you know, we've got no. I would add that the uh, present commitment to Montpelier Ambulance to cover the ends of the town that they cover that we don't cover and Waterbury similarly. Northfield also covers a section, but they, we don't receive anything from us. Right. But those uh, payments uh, shouldn't be considered as donations. That's payment for service. Yeah. And in some way, I would draw a parallel to what we're asking for. Now, rather than a donation, I would expect it to be entrenched as a cost Service. of serving our community. Yeah. I'm always puzzled by whether or not the towns are uh, required to provide ambulance service to their 
they're yeah. citizens, and so I don't believe they are. That's actually, so that's a, that's a good point, Johnny. So one of the issues, one of the parts of that bill that was just signed, there is an EMS task, you know, the task force, of course, that is, that is going to be looking at uh, EMS challenges, and by December 2026, they have to make recommendations. And one of those issues is accountability. Because as Johnny pointed out, it's, it's, I, I, went, I asked the legislature, uh, is Moortown, is Faceton, is Waitsfield, is Warren on the hook? You're not. I don't believe you were, all, you were obliged to provide EMS services for your uh, constituency. I don't, I don't believe that's the case. You do it, of course, because it's a vital service. But there needs to be better clarity about, about funding because it's, it's crazy that each agency has to you know, come and figure it out, right? And uh, there needs to be, there needs to be uh, something that's consistent across the state. Real clear mandate on the services yeah. you actually have to provide. Exactly. Yeah. So, so it, it's especially the free of charge ones. Yeah. 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 It's so. interesting that we're the, the we're part of the only two remaining volunteer ones. Yes. Yes. You know, so oh, all these other communities, yeah. even though they might not have to provide it, are yeah. providing it. Okay. You've got to provide yeah. a service to the your Right, and so went from an all-volunteer organization to basically being absorbed in their municipal budget. Right, and that was a huge. You know the number. Oh. Well, when I looked at it five or six years ago, it was about nine hundred grand. Yeah, I could point out well, that the run, yeah. the run Mervis has to provide the same service. You have to have about twelve, at least twelve members to provide the twenty-four hour day service, and it would run in so a, would be a region yeah, of a million, million and a half. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we don't, we don't, we don't want to do that. Yeah, um, no, we, we like. We like to. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. If anybody went to the pancake breakfast yesterday. You could see it was a fun. It was a fun group of people, and we like supporting the community. We like what we do. We want to keep doing it. And the community likes us. It's a very rewarding group. All so right. Thank you. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you. Very much. All right, guys. We'll stay in touch. Okay. Yep. Plus, I'm sure Johnny will just keep yeah. us in touch. Thanks, much. Thanks, John. Uh, John, next up is Cheryl Lynn. Oh, John, next up is Cheryl Lynn. Right. Okay, so I've been feeling out um, interest rates for a general fund, and I am asking the board tonight to switch over to Northfield Savings Bank from Community Bank. Currently, we're getting um, 1.75, and that's just because I asked about it. Um, Northwood Savings Bank is offering us 3.05%. Yes. Caroline, can you repeat those numbers? Sure. You, if maybe you should move theirs because so you can hear you. And then that way these guys can see. Currently at um, Community Bank. Yes. We're getting 1.75. 1 1.75, 1 okay. Yep. And I called them or I communicated with them on May, 4, May 14th and we were only getting 0.25% prior to that. So they've only offered us up to 1.75, which is happening now. And at Norfield Savings Bank, they're offering us 3.05%. So 3.05? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I'm asking the board if they would consider switching over our general fund and our savings reserve fund because they have offer, they've also offered 3.05 for the savings reserve and the capital reserve as well. Right. OK. Mm. And um, Community Bank is only offering us 1.75 for everything. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> How's everybody else feel? Seems like, a, yeah, I, I don't see any drawback. They're both yeah. local banks. They're, yeah. yeah, it's a no-brainer, no huh? Yeah, 1.25%, okay. It's going to take me some time to do it because I have to do payroll. i got to clear all the checks that have been cut out of there. Yeah. Uh, Northfield Savings Bank is willing to work with me and help me, you know, go through that transition. So there's going to be some training involved because of their payroll side of it and all that. But they're, they're very willing to help out with that. So I don't have a problem with it. 
Okay, so I'd uh, actually like to make uh, three motions. First motion would be to move our general fund from Community Bank to Northfield Savings Bank. Do I have a second? Second. Any more discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Okay. <clears throat> My second motion is to move the savings reserve, <clears throat> also uh, with Community Bank, to Northfield Savings Bank. Second. Any more discussion on that? All in favor, say aye. 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 John. Yes. Before I know where you're going with your third motion, um, Capital Reserve Fund is already at Norfolk Savings Bank, so there's no motion to be made on that one. They just offered us the same interest rate as they did for everything else. Okay. What, what's that again? The Capital Reserve Fund is already at Northfield Savings Bank, so that you don't need to make a motion to move that over. They're just offering us the same interest rate. Oh, yes, okay. All right. All right. Next item on agenda, Shirley. Next item, uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns is asked, um, offering voluntary benefit opportunities for life, short-term disability, and long-term disability coverage for VLCT members. With that being said, we have to have at least 15% of our municipal staff um, willing to do it in order to participate. So basically with our full-time employees, that would be two people. Um, this would not cost the town anything. It would be all on to the employees if they decide to to choose this, and I'm asking if you guys would approve me offering this to the employees. If they, if we have enough, then we can join in, in with the benefits of the LCT. Uh, Joe, want to make a motion to that effect, John? Or so it's basically. Okay. Ba Go ahead, John. Sorry. So it's basically helps all the uh, employee, employees, but it doesn't cost the town anything. It's just a way to access better, better benefits. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The employees would be paying for it on their own voluntary. Yeah. So I mean, we're talking health care and dental or whatever. Not health care. Just. Um, no. This is just life insurance. Oh, yeah, just life insurance. Life insurance. Life short oh, okay. yeah, life term disability, disability. That kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. But again, we have to have fifteen percent for. The, at least right. two of the employees would have to talk. To, yeah. to Otherwise, work. then it's not offered at all. So and do you need a motion or you just need permission? Just that's just um, um, I would prefer to have a motion because I'm going to be payroll deducting it out of the employees. Benefits if they decide to do if it. If they decide. I, I'll go for it then. I, I'll make a motion that we uh, allow Sherilyn to offer the VLCT uh, offerings to current full-time employees. Is that what you're saying? At no cost to the town. I'll second that. Any discussion on that? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. okay. And the next thing is the Vermont Child Care Contribution, which is mandatory um, for all employees in the state of Vermont. Um, it's a 0.44% um, deduction or payment of all employees' gross um, payroll bi-weekly for us. Um, I did up the calculations on that, and it would cost the town $74.77 bi-weekly, rough that's based <coughs> on their average hours of being 40 hours a week for all the full-time and then based on you know the library and <coughs> anyone else who's being paid. So I reached out, or I've been in contact with other towns, and I've only heard back from one town that is not paying the full amount. 
the towns are all paying, other than that one, they're paying the whole 0.44%. You do have the option where the employees have to contribute up to 0.11% um, of the wages. So I'm asking you if you, as a select board, want to pay the 0.44% of the employees' gross wages. Or the other option? Is yeah. Or the other option is the 0.11%. So I did up the spreadsheet showing you on everybody's average hours, showing you that it would cost the town $74.77 if you contributed the entire 0.44%. Is this something that has to be decided tonight? It has to start July 1st. And I've spoken to Tom and he said he's in support of the paying the entire 0.44%. And if you want, he's in a meeting right now, but he's willing to jump on if you need him to, because he is in support of it. What, what did you say, Tom is in favor? Tom Tom's is in, in favor, it's less than $2,000. Based I'll on make yeah on current salaries. Yeah, I'll make a motion. Okay, I make a motion that we uh, pay the total cost of the Vermont child care tax contribution. contribution for all current employees. Uh, I guess that's it. We don't know the true amount, but just the point. I'll second that. Make it Any more discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. Very good. Huh? Yeah, is that it? Okay. No, yeah. a couple more oh. things. Oh. Um, <laughs> Not on the agenda, sorry. <laughs> um, I just wanted to point out um, that we ended up paying over seventeen thousand dollars for the new for the new motor in the 2018 um, truck at, for the garage. Um, I'd like to point out that we do have thirty over thirty three thousand dollars sitting in the maintenance reserve fund, and the um, town voters did approve to um, allow the select board to transfer funds or make payments out of for unanticipated expenses. So that's what I would like to um, ask you if you want to move some of those funds over because it's way over budget that obviously was not put into the budget. So I wanted to bring that up to you. It was 17,000 more? Or? Yeah, it was a little over 17,000. So this is what we ended up paying, and then we ended up getting a credit because Tom worked with them. Right. But it okay. was a little over 17000 Oh, total. That's what we yeah. did. Okay. For the repair. Yeah. But right. Think, that's that's what we were planning. Well, it was yeah. we, have, we, don't, we didn't move any money to pay for it. No. We oh, have right. $7,500 put in the budget for the 2018 International, and that's for, like, oil changes and, you know, right. maintenance. We've already spent over 21000 I wanted to bring that to your attention to see if you wanted to move some money. When is when do we got to pay that bill? It's already, oh, it's been, already paid. been paid. Yep. So we don't have to move it today. It was paid in February. Okay. Uh, I don't think we need to do that today. Okay. Do you? No. no. no let's okay. do that. I think we can wait until the next board. meeting. Yeah. At least get you know get okay. Tom and Callie right. involved in that one. Yeah. And then today to do. the other. We're gonna have to move it. Amazing. Yeah. Well, uh, you know all of this equipment. The only other thing that I have for you guys tonight is the Village Hill bids for the paving. Uh, Ray is here. We received three bids, and you guys need to make a decision on that. Uh, you can either do it now or later, but I just wanted to give them to you because it does need to be made. No, we have. Yeah, you've got to keep a schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Just read the bids out loud. You're not the warning the job tonight. Yeah. Ray, can you, you come gotta, up you gotta to come the table? Up. You come yeah. Up. Sure, John. Even that. As long as, as long as there's no seat belts here. Yeah, come over here. here. We can get all this. Yeah. And we'll get over here. Okay. So, Just like in the old days, Ray. Don't <laughs> braid <laughs> Hi, John. Uh, so, what I have here, Ray, all right? Can you hear me, John? 
Yeah, I, I, now I hear you. Okay. So what we have here uh, is bids for uh, overlaying Village Hill, um, something we have a grant for. Yeah. So, uh, and that's an 80, I think it's an 80% grant. The state's paying 80% of the cost. Knows, but I think that's so um, all I'm asking you tonight is to read the bids for, I think there's three bids here. Okay. Just read the bids out loud. And we're not making a decision tonight on but awarding the jobs or just reading the bids reading publicly. The bids, okay, publicly. Okay. And then I can review them from here and then the next meeting uh, have a recommendation. Okay. Do, you want, do you want to read them? Do you want me to read them? I'll read them. Is that okay, John, if I read the bids? John, can, is it okay if I read the bids out loud? Yes. Excellent. Okay, these are bids to repave Moortown Village Hill. Uh, the first bidder is J.A. McDonald. All you need to read is the total price. And the total amount of the bid is $39,840 and zero cents. Company? Uh, this is from J.A. McDonald. $39,840. It looks like the end uh, The next bid to repave Morgantown Village Hill is for Hunger Hungerford Construction, LLC. Uh, the total bid amount for them is $40,560. The third... Oops. I think you might have that. Did I miss one? Yeah. Oh, I stuck one together. Oh, There's three in there. Oh, and then this is the uh, bid form itself. Uh, the last and final bid to uh, repave the Village Hill and Moortown Mountain Road is from Pike Industries. Uh, the total amount of their bid is $48,942. Hmm. All right. Oh, sorry. If you can email me a copy of those. Oh. You did. You did. Okay. All three of them? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, okay. That, that's right. all I need to know. Right. right now I'll notify the, we'll send an email out to the bidders of the results and let them know that uh, okay. we'll review the bids and make a decision by the next meeting. Great. So okay. just just while you're here, I saw that email about uh, coordination with the church and stuff. Yeah, do um, you want me to discuss that right I now? I don't know, is this, are we good? Can we, no, I have one more thing. Oh, okay. Uh, so, right, right. No. and then I'm done. <laughs> um, I have to ask for an amendment on the minutes from the last meeting. In the minutes, I don't have them in so front of So you're not talking about the 6-3 meeting, you're talking about Six, the... 5-20 uh, Because we didn't have... 5-20, yeah. yeah, the meeting before that. Yeah, we didn't even approve those yet, so... Okay, do you have them with you? I do have a copy of Can I just uh, sneak at it real quick? Um, it will cost you when done that. <laughs> <laughs> I just need that top page. It's right there. Just the paper tag. came from being a contractor. Right? What's that? I came from being a contractor with all the lists and subs and pieces. Oh, so you don't have that um, thing that I gave you because it's not on these minutes. Must have been on the ones before. So anyway, the minutes read that it was 162 plus dollars to transfer the lost revenue funds from the general fund over to the capital reserve fund and that should have been twenty seven thousand twenty dollars and seventy four cents so we want to say that again john did you get that i did now what? Can you repeat that? I. It's not in those ones. Oh. The correct amount that should have been transferred, giving me permission to transfer over from the ARPA funds for lost revenue, was twenty-seven thousand twenty dollars and seventy-four cents. Okay. What was it in the minutes? <clears throat> um, I don't have them in front of me. It was one sixty-two. It was plus and change. Yeah. One hundred sixty-two dollars. No thousand. Oh. So it's a so it was less. A lot less. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but the ARPA funds are now out of ARPA funds and they are all considered 
lost revenue because okay. that's what we right. decided to do okay. so that the town could use the funds as they wish. Yeah, all right. So if somebody can still move it, and then second. Oh, what, to, to, oh. to change the meaning? Or? And then just to change the amount. The amount so to on the, the minutes. Correct but amount. we don't know what day they're from? Or? It must, if they're not in that one, it was on the first page, so it must have been the meeting before. I have those things too, if you want. Yeah, yeah, if you have those. I was trying to find them online here. So that would have been May 20th? No, you just gave me those. Oh, it was the week before that. I think it was May 6th. Yep. Okay. Uh, Sasha, where is the thing that I gave you today? So. Because it has that amount on it. I gave it to you in order to. Here's the notes right here. Oh, how much? Can you give me today? No, and it's not on here because it was on the bottom. Okay. Would it, would it have been before then? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Meaning that I was at the meeting, the last meeting in March, May. Uh, that's when we talked about it. The last meeting? In May. Oh. The 20th? Sure. Well, that's, well, that's the, the one that we just looked at, yeah. Right. The 20th, right. Yeah. I thought it was on the Can you just go grab that? I don't know what you're talking about. I gave you the today. Right yeah, here, I have some notes on it right here. Oh, that's the project. <coughs> yeah, this is when we talked about the opera funds or capital reserve funds to lower the taxes, right? Yeah. And the, fi the finance committee made this recommendation. Right. And that says. Right? Yeah, so it should have been on the 20th. But I don't have any numbers with that. I just have the notes. Yeah, this is from the 20th. Right. Yeah. No, it was 520. It's right here. Under reports and communications. Well, on the meeting notes. Yep. What? 520. Yep, right here. Under reports and communications, it's the first one. Right here, so I'm an official motion. Yes, that's the one. Money to it's on 520. Yeah, we got so it. So I'm going to move 162. Yeah, here it is. It's right here. Under reports and communications. So there's, yeah. a, there's what we need to change. Okay, yeah. let's, we can go for it. All right. And it was actually 162,817.10, but it won't matter because this number is still wrong. So, so that just needs to be amended to the um, 20,000. Okay. Or 27,000, $20.74. So uh, here, number. I'll make the motion. Go ahead, Don. You get the sheet in front of you. So this is regarding uh, moving money to the capital reserve from, um, so we're asking, allowing Sherilyn to move 20, what did you say? $27,020.74. Okay, from the, from the general fund to the capital reserve fund. All in favor, of, all of you, I need a second. Anybody want to second that? Second. Okay, I'll, I'll, so John, you would do that. That's the. I don't know if he's. John? Can you hear us, John? He's muted. He's muted. Oh. <laughs> he can't vote then. Hello. So, do you John. just want us to make a motion to amend the minutes, though? Yes. Oh, just make a motion to amend the minutes of the 20th to have the correct amount. Yes, that's all I need. Well, we still can't get John to vote. But. John, you're on mute. Sorry. There you okay. go. <laughs> All right. So can you hear us, John? 
Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay. All right. So we're did, are you? We've been discussing about uh, moving these funds from the general fund. It was uh, the wrong noted incorrectly on the la, on right. the five twenty meeting notes. So okay. did yep. you did you hear the motion I made or? Uh, actually, I I didn't know if you were done with the motion or not. Okay. Yeah, I was. I made a motion to allow Cheryl Lynn to move 20000 and some odd. $27,020.74. Instead of. In, in, in lieu of the 162000 that was uh, recorded in the 520 meeting minutes. Second. Gotcha. And Robin okay. just second. Good. Okay. Any more discussion? No. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm done now. Um, so we can, we'll just go with the Chris Hunt answer. We'll just, we don't need to talk about the sidewalk right now. No. We're good with that. Okay. Yeah. Good. You good with these? Yep. Okay. I just wanted to talk briefly about the Thanks, Sherilyn. Thank you, John. Oh, yeah. So Should next, we, well, next we have the uh, Planning Commission members. Uh, John, I, I, believe, I believe Ray has something else well, to say. Well, these guys have been waiting for Oh. Uh, do you want to wait wait. till the end, Ray, or? Uh, it doesn't matter to me. OK. Oh. You guys have an agenda. So you want to let Ray? I don't care. Let, let okay. I appreciate it. I only got five minutes here. <laughs> I just wanted to update the select board. Um, I met with a Methodist church uh, board uh, tonight, okay. and this is regarding the easement. Yep. Uh, two things: easement and review the, the existing condition of the foundation there. Mm -hmm. um, they just want to amend the easement a little bit. Uh, I'm okay with it. It's they're concerned that because it's regular sidewalk, uh, their private sidewalk, <laughs> and, uh, they want to make sure that if something happens to their sidewalk because of this drainage easement, that the sidewalk gets repaired as well. And I told them it's all part of the agreement, but they want to add more language. I'm good with that. So you'll be seeing a little bit more language. From then, and then the attorneys look at it and okay. get it signed off. So okay. we're all good. Um, the second item was the uh, existing foundation near the drive, along the drive that we're going to be, re be uh, replacing. Uh, we took several pictures. Uh, we all witnessed it. I'm going to put the pictures together with a summary of what we talked about, so we all know where we stand. Okay. And. Uh, they're going to review that, and if they have any questions, they're going to let me know. Uh, when we're all done construction, we'll walk through again, okay. examine cracks. these cracks, yeah. and yeah, agree like that. at that point, okay, nothing happened, we're all good. So, you know, a couple of years down the road over there, there's no question about, question about what happened who there. would happen there, the foundation's cracks or whatever. Yeah. So I think, I think we got yeah. it covered. All right. Sounds all right. good. Uh, uh, we are planning on starting the construction as planned next Monday. Pretty much the parking lot and the bus loop is going to be closed for about a month. Um, and the entrance will be in this uh, in the north entrance. And uh, you know any parking will have to be uh, out behind the office here somewhere. Okay. Oh. okay. Thanks, Ray. Yes, right. All right. Good. You guys have a good night. Thank oh, you. yeah, during, Thank you for, so during the project, I mean, even for when there's meetings here, people will have to they still have access in the air. I, they'll have access right. uh, pretty, you know, I'm, I'm sure that there'll be a gravel lot out there to yeah. park, but right. for right now, I'm saying the lot is closed, yeah, and it should, uh, we'll yeah. make every accommodation we can at that time yeah. yeah. when they know there's a meeting to have some space there. And people are still going to try to get the pickleball. Oh, yeah, yeah, pickleball people can go through. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to be going slower, you know? I hope so. So we'll take their pickleballs away. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank See you, Ray. See you later, Ray. Pickle paddles. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ray, be careful. One of your shoes is untied. Oh, oh, I need oh, to yeah. see you fall. Yeah.
Thank you. Yep. Okay. okay. Back on the agenda. Okay, sir. Now the Planning Commission <coughs> candidates. Yep, we have one. Who wants to go first? Well, we have two of the three, I guess. Well, no. Oh, Jack, Jack said Jack he dropped, dropped out. Today, so he dropped out. Do you guys want to roll up to the table? Come on up to the table or wherever you want. Come on up and have some fun. <laughs> All right, John, we have a... Uh, it's Bob. Bob. Yeah. Bob, yeah. Bob yeah. and... Yeah. Right, this guy uh, here? What? Oh, we don't want him. We'll take his <laughs> well, <ball>. John... <laughs> you talk, remember, John, we're escaping the barrel. So... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. How do we want to... Yeah, how how do we want to see here? With two, with, we have two people willing to volunteer. Uh, okay, good. Go ahead, Bob. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah uh, well, I, my, my husband and I moved here to, uh, um, well, we found a place up on Howes Road nine years ago. All okay. right. And uh, moved, moved here, uh, now, now full time. Uh, I'm an uh, educator and a, I guess a scientist. I'm a geologist by training. And I'm looking for a way, I'm retired, retired from teaching community college for 26 years. And uh, look, and previous to that, working in state public drinking water, I worked in, in government for six years in, in, in Texas, uh, not not here in Vermont. But uh, and I'm not a Texan. I need to put that in public public record. Uh, not that there's any, any feelings about that. Um, That's one of the first things he told me. <laughs> I lived in Texas. <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, uh, I do have Vermont roots. Uh, that my my family were the early settlers in Cornwall, moved up to town in Georgia. One of them moved over to Salisbury. Then they hop skipped hop skipped to New York, and I grew up in Michigan. Uh, so I'm sort of coming back to roots. Uh, it's the way I feel. And, uh, it's it's uh, my husband and I got married here at Moose Meadow Lodge ten years ago, and this this feels like home now. Uh, and and uh, we're look, looking for ways to, or I am, because I retired three years ago, looking at ways to contribute to the community. And that's why the planning commission seemed to be the best fit for me. Yeah. Um, I was an Air Force disaster preparedness officer, uh, and I worked in government. Um, and so these are the kinds of things. I know most people don't get uh, excited about local hazard mitigation plans. Um, I don't get excited about them either, either but I, I think there's something to contribute there. So, um, and the other thing is I've been using GIS for uh, since 1974, first generation system. I'm not an analyst by any any stretch of the, the imagination, but I love maps, uh, and I guess that's a big part of planning uh, in the town plan is uh, trying to show people as best as possible uh, what the future uh, presents for us. So. That's what, that's why I'm volunteering. Uh, right. That's always there's always things to be done. I know. <laughs> yeah. okay. My turn. Yeah. I don't so. have any questions. Nope. Do you have any John, questions? John, yeah, I'm sorry, Bob You both. Oh, so good. Sergeant. Glad to meet you. John, do you have any questions? Maybe I'll move down a little so we can make sure. Here. Yeah. 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 John, do you have any questions? John, no, he, he, okay. you left out the, as a sweet little dog, Lucy. <laughs> Are you guys neighbors? Is that uh, yeah, John, John, yeah, I live on the house road and I walk the dog all the way down to the house farm and back yeah, okay, twice, twice a day. So I uh, saw, saw John regularly with his dogs walking on the road. Yeah, uh, so go. that's how we got to know each other. Uh, like, like many of my neighbors, the dog is a great, Icebreaker. Yeah. There you are. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, John, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay, good. Just a second. I, I don't always speak up very well. Um, Deb Sargent, I've known some of you from for a while. Um, I live on the other side of town, as you know. Um, my background is actually, I've just recently retired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh, it, it, I needed a year actually yeah. to decompress from the job I had and then I'm also looking for, know. you know, to, um, you know that feeling? 
Um, and it was a job that was involved like a lot of project kind of management, so I needed a break. Um, but now my um, uh, education background is in natural uh, resource planning. I have a master's in natural resource planning. I also have a background in microbiology. So I had done a study in the Mad River Valley um, on E. coli in the Mad River and did a big mapping, um, so GIS mapping mm -hmm. um, for that, for like watershed analysis. Um, so that's kind of where my background is on the environmental side. Um, because of the natural resource planning. I worked on the last town plan, the one that um, was dated 2016. Uh, so I know all that that involves. The last time we had actually a hired planner to help out. So when I heard this time <laughs> around that the plan is like a year late and we don't have any funding to get a planner, um, I decided so I should offer to um, help out since I, I know the process and I know um, just really what a good planning process should be. Okay. Um, you know, more of that from, you know, from my background and from um, doing the last plan. And my real interest in actually planning is, I just love planning. <laughs> um, it's like my mindset. And in planning, especially for town planning, the town plan uh, can get approved for eight years. But I think when we are looking at town planning, we need to think at least a generation out, yeah. two generations, three generations, that we really think about what we want the future of Moortown to be, what we want the future of our region to be, the future of Vermont, you know, everything. Really, and, and thinking outside of ourselves and our immediate what's going on right now. Um, and maybe what we individually want, we really need to think about um, actually what the people in Moortown want. The most important part of a planning process is involving um, everybody in town, all the stakeholders, and that you make sure you bring um, into the process people who are, you know, opposite sides of every issue. And that doesn't mean just putting out front porch forum notices or in the newspaper, you know, it can actually mean actively going out, calling people, and getting people to come um, that you know will give another viewpoint. And I feel, I see that as the most important part of the process. Mm -hmm. um, that and really looking generations out and, um, you know, getting the community to actually look at that perspective and then come together with, um, you know, what we really see our visions and goals as being. Um, in order to create a good plan. The other part of the plan, town planning, is there are actually limitations of what we can do. Um, you know, there's all the state regs, um, all the state laws, um, the regional planning commission, you know, so we have to build the plan around all of those, but then also make it more towns. Um, so I just, I love planning. So. <laughs> That's why I really feel like I can help out in, that, in knowing the whole process. Great. Okay. Thank you. Any well, questions? Any questions? questions? Oh, I can't. We're just now talking to that thing. <laughs> so, John, you heard all that? Yes, yeah, so I could hear that. Okay. <laughs> so, any so what, questions? What's the procedure and, now? How do we? How do we? Go about this. We wait till our next meeting. We what do we do? Uh, I if they met, they both met with the planning commission. I assume. I've been going to the planning commission meetings. Um, when I, I actually, wait, I, I can't, can't hear. Oh, I've been going to the planning commission meetings, and I'd heard. Um, uh, I had offered. I talked to Dave Stapleton, saying, "You know, if there's ever anybody leaving." You know, um, oh, it's because I was going to the road committee yeah. meetings. Yeah. So, and Dave was there, and um, it kind of word was kind of like they didn't know if they were gonna have enough people. Um, so I said I'll help. So I started just going to just help out. Okay. Yeah. Um, I I have not. I talk, I've talked to Karen Horn about it, but I haven't gone to the meeting yet. Do we have 
How many seats? Okay. One seat? Deb Carroll um, resigned. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, well, can we mull it over a little bit or do we need I, to mull? Yeah, I'd ra I prefer to uh, do it next meeting. Okay. Okay. Yeah, right. then we can circulate emails. That way we can talk about yeah. it. Talk off watch you on We won't be here to put you on. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We can watch it on TV. We can watch it. They're talking about us. We're hoping to see them in and watch us talking about it. Exactly. Yeah. Whatever you want. Whoever signs it. I won't show up here. Okay. So we'll just we'll just go zoom in. Zoom us. Yeah. Zoom into the meeting. Zoom us and mute us. Yeah. Well, John, can we discuss it a little bit right now? If someone like, what's that? I mean, I, I would, I would like to just say one thing about it. Sure. That's all. Go ahead. And uh, Bob, no. Yeah. You know, all right. Just my take on it would be that Deb has a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. Has already been on the planning right. commission right. and has, as right. she said, she's done a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so that my, the next thing that would sort of sway me to that decision mm -hmm. sure. if the board sure. has to make the decision. But that being said, I can definitely tell you about two or three other opportunities <laughs> <laughs> that you can, you yeah, know, well, that you could be involved yeah. in. You know, yeah. you don't have to do it right now. But right. I'm happy right. To call I understand. You. I understand. would say, can I just add? Is of course. Part of the planning process is getting as many people involved as possible. Yeah. yeah. You know, so. You know, and, and getting extra help. So it's like, I would probably, if it wasn't going to be on me on the planning commission, I would still, I would be offering to say, still help out. Right. I would prefer to be on the planning commission because I think I can do more to really help move things along and just get the plan done, done, done. sooner yeah. rather than later. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but without losing the process that we really should have. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, to get that um, citizen participation. But it'd be good to like tap other people who are really interested <laughs> to like you know, get people sure. to come. Sure. You could do it that don't... way for a while. Right. And then, you know, have some other persons who mm -hmm. serve the sure. time. Sure. Yeah, I don't I don't need a title or anything. I that that's right. That happened with retirement but after your retirement. No, I mean know. then you could help sure. and then when someone a else absolutely goes off you could go back on that's that's true. Right. That's true. That's true. When yeah. we did this before, so we win for everybody. Yeah. It was the planning consultant that actually led, like the meetings that we had. The participant, and, mm -hmm. and we're going to have to yeah. do that ourselves, from what I'm seeing. Um, um, Carol's getting paid to help out. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. like great organizing, but I think as a planning commission, we are going to have to really manage that participatory stuff. Yeah. And it makes sense to me to like get other people in the community to also be involved to say, you know, we have you know, you get the bunch of people together and you need group leaders. Yeah, we want, kind of we want a visioning thing like yeah, like and, uh, and was you, done down in Warren. And, yeah, and yeah. you get you just tap into other people to do that. And that way it isn't the planning commission that driving and, and having it look yeah, like the planning absolutely. commission is dictating to everybody. Right. You, know, you yeah. really get everybody else no, to yeah. Public yeah. forums. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, that said your people. Sasha? Yeah. yeah. What do the uh, the bylaws say regarding the number of commissioners? That I'm not mm -hmm. sure about because I'm thinking maybe there could be an alternate. Well, Way back when, in my planning commission days, uh, we had nine, up to nine. Up to nine, okay. We had more interest at that point. So I don't know what, what it is now, but. I will dig into that. The only, I, I, it, I believe, come to think of it, it might have been reduced okay. because they wanted a quorum, but I mean, I don't know if it's seven or five. I will do some digging. Okay. Gives us some flexibility. Well, great. Thank you for your cool. time. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you for thank coming. You. Are we going to stay? Are you talking about the tax rate next? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's on the agenda. I'm just curious. I don't know. 
Oh, yes, we are, Dad. We can both stay for that. I'm not sure we'll discuss it tonight because we're missing two other members. Right. Okay. Yeah. I just yeah. Well, just I, let's just check with John. I don't know. Is that going to be Cheryl? John. John. Discussing it? Or? Mm -hmm. oh. Yes. The next thing on the agenda would be the, discussing the tax rate, but do you want to wait for Tom and Callie? Uh, yes. Okay. 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 Yeah. So there you go. So now. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. No, thank thank you. You. We really we appreciate, so appreciate your time. It. No, for coming in. Well, I'm glad you guys both want to help yeah. out. Yeah. You know? I understand it's an unusual no. thing to have so many people. Uh, uh, don't worry, we'll find a way to uh, well, that's okay. all right. we'll find well, a way to make it happen if we can. So. Okay. Well, thanks, but, Bob. Thanks, Deb. All right, John. See ya. Like Deb said, we really want uh, as much input as we possibly can get. Oh well, well, thank you. All right. Uh, so we're on to reports and communication. On to reports and communications, John. Wait, I can't can't hear you. Uh, we're on to reports and communications. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> Why don't you go first, Robin? Uh, I don't have any reports or communications. Okay. Don. Um. Yeah, a couple of things. Okay. So first, we had our meeting with uh, the the uh, Vermont uh, Traffic Committee. Yeah. Uh, to review just Route Two. Oh, good. Okay. Oh. Just oh. Turned. Oh. Oh. Can John still hear us? Yes. Okay. He's yeah. Well, now. Okay. We still have so uh, we, yes, we had that meeting uh, with the Vermont Traffic Committee, okay. and we reviewed. Uh, all they did was take up. I mean, there's several things in the traffic coming letter. There's Route Two and 100B. All they were taking up this time was Route Two okay. and the speed. Okay. And so, um, what's the committee agreed upon after they did a speed study? is that the speed limit will change to 45 miles an hour from basically the old landfill okay. to Gallagher's, Gallagher Acres, or okay. you know, they have a mile mark, obviously. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, it'll stay, still stay 35 through that year, fairgrounds and Gallagher Acres. Okay. And they're not gonna drop that to 30. To 30, okay. At this point in time. Then okay. they, we will also uh, be meeting with them uh, it was agreed that we would have a meeting to get into the the Route 2, some other items on Route 2, mm -hmm. and then also get looking at 100B. 100B as well. and, and we're also, we're all in that process, we're also working with uh, CVRCP, yep. uh, Central Vermont Regional, Regional Planning, Planning Commission. Commission. Yeah. So I've reached back, some, I've reached out back to them and, and we're supposed to be meeting with them as well. Okay. So that's, so that's a go ahead on the speed dropping? Yeah, they voted in favor of dropping it okay. from 50 right. to 45. And yeah, that's, that's great. I always second. think it's 50 is too fast through there. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. Easy. And we're going to meet to talk about okay. other issues and road markings and such. Okay. To 45, you said? 45. 45. From the landfill yeah. to, yeah. to Gallagher. Right. Almost Gallagher. Yeah. Same drop or it drops down. Then I wanted to, so Sasha, you sent a, a, I mean, I don't know, this is, we can just do this all now, right? But you sent that email about um, the municipal enhanced energy planning, a, a webinar or something that's coming up. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that gone to the planning commission as well? Because they referenced that. I believe um, so. Did that go to Carol Dave? Oh, Carol's on that? Okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah, that was quite a thing there. So, um, and then we got another, we had another email about the hazardous mitigation grant program. Right, yeah. Uh, we, uh, that, I don't know who, who that person was, Judy. Sorry. Judy Listen. Daly, she lives over on Cobb Hill. All right, so she saw that, listened, heard it on VPR. So, right. is that something, I meant to ask Sherilyn, do you know offhand, is that something she knows about or? Or did she get that email? She must have, right? Yes. 
and it's the same one that you had that I brought up yep. that Karen and I yes. we brought up. So okay, yeah. that's I just wanted to make sure it wasn't the same. Um, have we had any update on Fox Farm? As far as we know, that that worked there. Who would know about that? Ray maybe or Martin? Anybody know about that? The culvert replacement Tom, on the Fox Farm? I actually Farm? last talked to Dick Melton and he, I believe. Oh, Tom, a month ago yeah. or so. I yeah. just wonder if they, you know, I just don't want to guess, get caught by that again. And we still maybe should put on our old business and wait till the next time. We still have the Mad River Valley Rec District. Yes, you she know. sent an email about we got it, that. Again, I know. Yep. So maybe we should put it down and okay. make sure we... Oh, joining MRV. Is it, yeah. Is oh, joining MRVRD. Yeah, right. yeah, right. yeah, so should we? we that. That's what I meant. Right, right. The MRV rec yeah. district. So we should, you know, maybe when all five of us are here, at least, you know, chat about it again. So yeah, that comes with some money, right? Twenty-five grand or something. Um, the rec district. We have to give them. Oh yeah, no. We have to give them like twenty five thousand dollars. I thought it was the other way around. If somebody volunteers, we don't have to put that money in there. Yeah, well, let's, oh, we gotta look it back up. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure. sure. We'll have to check. I thought we had to put the money in, and then we get the to grants. To be part of the. Then we get the grants. It. Yeah. Get the potential to get the money back, kind of thing. Glad they pay you tomorrow for a hamburger today. Uh, okay. We never so, heard anything about the street lights from Green Mountain. Nope, Power. No, I tried to look into that myself. It was very, there was very elusive information. I did <laughs> meet with them. I did meet with our neighbors and told them that they should call as well. Yeah, so, I mean, I I um, I tried to yeah, no, I tried to get some information and it was extremely difficult hmm. to try to find. I didn't really have the actual address and stuff, but even in general, I, yeah, trying to find out who was responsible for any of it was. And then um, next, uh, on July 1, our next meeting, okay. John, you can hear me as well. I can hear you now. Um, yeah. I met with um, uh, Karen Horn and Steve McGill um, to discuss town meeting. You know, when we finished town meeting last year, we talked about yep. meeting to talk about town meeting. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's funny. Yeah. So, um, I did, we had a coffee at uh, Red Hen, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, just chatted about some different ideas and stuff. All right. And so um, what came out of that was maybe coming, or not maybe, coming to the 7-1 select board meeting and having uh, 15 minutes to at least start the conversation. That sounds great. Is that all right? Sure. Put them yep. on the agenda. Good. Okay. I'll throw that one out there. Um, and then there's been a lot of information recently about, uh, you know, the, this law that was passed about open meeting law and the procedures for having open meetings. It was, uh, S, the, I don't know, House Bill 605 or something. Cheryl Lynn's sent it out to us a couple of times. Uh -huh. Just sent you an email on it. Um, but I, so I was... One one to just bring it up that maybe we should, maybe not at the seven one meeting, but have it something that we just chat about a little bit so we can understand what was passed and okay. what we how we need to to go forward. Not only as the select board, but how we need our other folks in town to go forward. Because like apparently they, I haven't read it enough myself either, but I saw it and know enough that we should all look at it and maybe have a, a meeting where we talk about it, you know. Okay. So maybe that's, you know, in, in the, you know, the one afterwards, whatever. Okay. Or the business or, okay. Have you heard about that, John, at all? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, so maybe, uh, I don't have a calendar in front of me. What's, the, what's after the 7-1 seven? Seven is... Uh, Okay, 15. July 15th. Oh, you guys are good. July 15th. Why? 14 days. Yeah, I know. Well, some people are better at that than others. 
Yeah, so all right, maybe we can pencil it in for July 15th, you know, <laughs> and remind that. everybody of the 7 1 meeting so that we read the. Okay. 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 Um, yeah, we should be able to have a quick discussion on it. And so, but John, you can. Yeah. So, as far as. I got two more items, I'm sorry. Sure. Okay. So, the Board of Civil Authority, right? The what? The Board of Civil Authority. BCA. BCA. We're, this, we're all members oh. of that, right? So I'm just trying to, I, I'm just trying to get a handle on, on. Um, first of all, there's a training session on June 26th that you can watch to see about tax, um, all these tax appeals. And so BC, right, right. Uh, BC, yeah. BCA members being, uh, I don't know how. I mean, I know I've seen the list of people who are on the BCA in our town. There's like 12 of us or something? They're all Justice of the Peace. Yeah, yeah the Justice of the Peace. Okay. Right. I mean, so I don't know if Sherilyn's heard back yet or, I mean, and how many appeals she's going to have, but it yeah, seems like, what? The notices I, haven't gone out. I know, no, she doesn't know until J July 7th. And then the, the hearing, the dates have to be on 7, 9, 10, and 11. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These hearings. So I'm just wondering, just like, whoa, you know, I mean, boom, boom, boom. you know, and, and who's going to go, she needs three people in every meeting, and who's, who's going to step up to do that, you know? Yeah. In the, I don't know. You know it's, and yeah, we need to think about it, though, because right? I don't, yeah. I have no idea, you know? And when I read it, I went, whoa, um, I don't know if I want to do that, you know, but I don't know. Do you know anything about this, John, at all? Remember it in the past, or? Oh, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I, I saw that. Uh-huh, well. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what she gets for people to come and do it. You know, yeah. and how many she gets. Yeah. I'm just throwing it out there, having it on the radio. Well, yeah, obviously, you, yeah. it's going to be during the daytime. And Yeah, know, I saw her yeah. thing at 8 yeah. in the morning, you know. So, um, anyways, something yeah. to think about, that's all. Uh, and this is actually the last meeting till the training, right? The training's on the 26th, right? yeah. So, we're, not Zoom meeting, we're, we're done. We're done. We're not going to meet again until July 1st. Right, and people in... We're not going to know how many tax appeals there are, so right. I don't know. I was going to look at the email again and see, you know, wonder what people are going to go do the training or not. Uh, or do you, if you don't do the training, the training is happen. a Zoom thing. Yeah, you'll see I, the email. I saw the email. Yeah. I'm just trying to. It must. You know, it's a Zoom thing. If it's yeah. a Zoom thing, I could probably sit through the training, but we'll have to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's from 10, well, 10, it's yeah, from that's like some 10 to 11 30. You know, about so that. Some thinking about that. Or we'll try to respond to Sherwin's email. So, um, last but not least. Okay. Oops. Just a quick update about the town hall. Okay. I, I was wanted to talk about around 6 3, but we. You know, we had no power and no meeting, but I did talk about this with Tom. So, um, just real quickly, so we, we have a, um, we've launched a capital campaign. Okay. We're at the silent stage where we're just looking for some large donors. And we've raised, uh, well, we have committed about 35 thousand dollars committed and we're trying to raise uh, 70 because we want to um, in, put have the architect continue in construction development with the okay. with the uh, construction manager because okay. to be shovel ready so to speak right yeah. and if we don't get into this slot then it's more delays. Yeah. We have had encouraging, what we think is encouraging is we heard from the Vermont libraries because okay. they requested additional information from us. So we got that out. That was, you know, back at the beginning of June and they had to have it by June 12th and okay. Cheryl Lynn, we all put it together. And 
the architect helped. There was a bunch of information they were looking at. So we're supposed to be hearing about that grant. The latest is in July sometime. Okay. Um, so we have our fingers crossed on that one. So um, basically, um, uh, one of, I've got two. One of two things is that we have a meeting scheduled with the architect and the construction manager for June 27th, which is a kickoff meeting to start the construction development drawings. We have raised approximately half of what their next fees will be. We're confident that we can raise the rest of it. But I do have to say that it's possible that, and I don't think we'll run into this, but it is possible come August or September, and we still haven't raised exactly that amount, that I'm wondering, or not wondering, hoping that the town would have a way that we could cover something if we had, you know, a shortfall in our fund in our capital campaign mm -hmm. until we want to either have the grant right. or we continue to raise more money. You know, it's just a backup. Um, well, if we're supposed to hear in July about the grant. Why we're looking out just yeah, I mean, just I, I'm just trying to give you an update. Yeah. I don't see the scenario okay. happening, but I want, I do want to yeah, start I the mean, process on June. Yeah, I expect delays, obviously. Right? Yeah, no, I no. do want to start the process on June twenty seventh. Okay. Um, and so certainly we have enough to cover for a couple of months, but right. okay. by then we'll certainly know. But I'm just yeah. putting, just putting it on. No, on I think the it's great. You put it out there. Yeah, it's just great. letting you know where okay. we are. Great. That sounds good. That's then. it. Yep. Okay. And we're all, and then also the other grant that we're waiting for, which is the Merper grant. Right. They did the energy assessment. Right. We haven't seen the report yet. Oh. And um, I've reached out to the Sam Lash, and I haven't heard back from her actually. I'm going to oh. call her. She's been, I think she was out on a vacation or something. Oh, okay. So. That's supposed to be coming, the, the application, it's supposed to be, that's for 500000 and that's right. supposed to be happening. That's supposed to so, be done, a done deal yeah. almost at this point, right? Yeah. Okay. So, okay, okay. I've had a lot of stuff, but there All you right. go, that's, that's me. Oh, thank you, Don. You've yeah. had a lot of stuff, so. Yeah. And I'm almost set. Okay. Uh, Sasha, how about, how about you? Uh, Don actually brought up mine. It was the um, Mount River Valley Rec District, so that's already been put out there. I have nothing else. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, uh, any other community? The minutes. Well, we got all oh, the minutes. Right. Okay. You don't have the anything to sign today? No. I do. Oh, okay. Yeah. The amended minutes, you mean, right? Oh, the, right. amended the amended minutes yeah. of 520. Should we wait to approve them when they're amended, or? Nope, you can do it verbally, and then okay. these, these minutes, when they're done, will reflect that. Reflect yep. the change in the yep. new minutes. Okay. Yeah, that, that'll do it. All right, so I make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of 520. Oh, with the additional <clears throat> amendments, right? Uh, with with the uh, uh, with the I'll second that with the yeah. amended. as amended as amended, as amended. tonight yeah. yeah okay any more discussion no all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. and you got that John seconded yeah. okay okay should we so take that take okay. care of yeah. Uh, let's go to old business. Should we take off that Senator Welch coming in? Because now that we've got that, I know that we got that 90 million. I'm, I'm sorry, what was that? Should we remove the Senator Welch thing is coming in? I don't know if that's, oh. if he's planning on coming anymore. I know they got. It's, it wasn't that he was planning. It was right. that if we wanted, Tom if wanted, we wanted to compose him, right. a list of solutions for 
the right. hazard mitigation buyouts to replace that revenue that the town is losing. Well, and I know they just kind of did that ninety million of federal but money. But it's not really going to address was, the problem. I thought that was specifically what that was for. No. Oh. Okay. No. Okay. Never mind. Okay. No. No old business. No. And we. Uh, John, we covered it. How about new business? I have an old business. Oh, Don's got oh. one. Did you, um, an old business is when we've, uh, we met with uh, Michelle uh, Richmond. Is that it? Redmond? Redmond, I met. Um, and uh, I did get a call from the Maynards uh, just this past right. week. Yeah. And, um, you know, that, that, bump, culvert bump there by their house is just brutal. And they've heard nothing from anybody. Oh. And um, so, I mean, I, I, would, I could call Michelle or, or both Sasha and I could call her or something. I know, John, you mentioned you were gonna try to reach out to her about the crosswalk. Right, yeah. So, if you want, I, I can, or, or you can. I don't know, we will, we can. Because you had talk, you had talk with her already, right? Yeah, I have, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll give yeah. her a call. Okay, good. All right. Yeah. All right, that was my old business. Yeah, I, I hit that yeah. the other day. And it was a... the, the trucks, when they, the trucks yeah, hit it's that, it's brutal. brutal. Okay. They fixed the spot across from your house. Well, the, the river thing, oh, I didn't know how to go up. Oh, I did see a little patch there, you're right. Oh, there's more though. Anyways. Uh, I'm, oh. I'll give her a call. Okay. Uh, give who a call? Yeah, Michelle. Oh, Michelle, okay. Yeah, I will. And uh, I was thinking about our, our neighbors there on Pawnee Farm. There were two vehicles there yesterday. Okay. Okay. I mean, I've I've spoken to them. They're really they're with, they're really working hard. It must have just been a, you know, uh, maybe it was a, a an overflow or something because they really are conscious of it and really trying to to make sure they park correctly. All right. Because I thought I thought they. And agreed to come in at some point. Yeah, they. I th yeah, I think that I. If, I will remind them about that. Um, okay. And because I think they spaced it out about coming in, but. Um, and I told them we were trying to to get the thing for the light pole, and uh, I asked them to call. You know, because the the. Okay. You know, so yeah, <laughs> they're good folks. Uh, I'm gonna have them come in. You'll okay. see. They're very nice. Okay. okay. Okay, so no new business? Nope. No, I don't think so. I'll kind of give you all that. Go on here. So are you all set for order sheets? For what? The order sheets? Order sheets? To sign, you mean? Oh, documents to sign. sign. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, we got a bunch. Are you going to sign virtually from there? <laughs> What? Are you going to sign them virtually? Uh, what I have, do you want to know what I, I guess, have, John? Yeah. yeah, you probably should go ahead. I have a couple of, I have two warrants. Sasha's going to read out the, uh, the communications. I have two warrants and I have two permits for the Ward Brook culverts that are going to be replaced. Uh, Ray needs those signed so that they can go into the state. Okay. Um, a contract that Ray would like approved, it's for the Civil Engineering Associates to complete the scoping services. Study, yeah. That needs to be signed. Okay. Uh, the annual local emergency management plan municipal adoption form just needs to be signed for this year. And I have one overload for Vermont Greenwood Resources. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> so, can you get them to me tomorrow? 
Sure. And we'll bring them up to you tomorrow. What time works for you? Uh, yeah, because I, I never... I, luckily, the other, other morning, my walking was okay. So, but yesterday, today, it's been bad. Okay. Do you want to just let me know in the morning what works? Sure. Okay. okay. We'll touch base. Thank you, John. Okay. So, we, but you, you know, guys, we, we just got to sign these guys. Yeah. You well, so can't cool. sign. The, no, it has to be, to be a, be a yeah. Tom, like a Tom or chair or co chair. Tom, Tom or John. Tom said this is a payroll, right? Yep. Yeah, you haven't been calling me in lately. Because <laughs> <coughs> I signed the last one, that's why. Yeah. You signed the last one before you... Well, no, I... No, no, I come yes. down and sign. Yeah. You want, but we don't sign all these spots, do we? No, I can have John. No, no, just the top sheet. Is John brought my own pen again. But, I mean, all these other sheets sent in here, these are just by... John. Yeah, you can review them if you want. Absolutely. Takes a lot of stuff to run a town. A lot of, I know, pay a lot of bills. Guys. But it's all roads and isn't it? You know? Okay, John, we're, we're good here. We're all done, John. Very good. Okay. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. So I'd okay. like, like to make a motion to adjourn. Okay, go ahead. 7.30. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Seconded. I'll second. No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.